Hey, welcome here, the Half Empty Cup, Joe and Jason. Uh, we've got a special continuation uh, with the Patriot Radio News Hour today. Uh, news right now, uh, the FDIC and others testifying in front of Congress on Silicon Valley, Valley Bank. Th these headlines are incredible. Uh, we, we've got so much to go over, but let me just give you uh, the long and short of what they are saying. This is how slow people are and complacent. You cannot be this complacent. I've been telling you for how long. Don't have excess money in the bank, period. You just, that you're going to get burned here. It's simple. On Friday, Jason, you remember... Right, we had ta started talking about Silicon Valley Bank like the week before. By that Friday, I mean they were all over the news. We were shocked. Remember, we were on the air that Friday morning when the Fed seized the bank. Today we found out that one hundred billion dollars of deposit withdrawal request were sitting at that bank when the Fed seized them. So think about this. This was a bank that had $172 billion worth of deposits. Jason, uh, that still left more than half the deposits were still in the bank when everybody was saying, dude, this bank's going under. Well, And, and the vast majority of those deposits, like 80-some percent, were that's uninsured. Go. Were that's uninsured. What, what were these people that's doing? That's exactly where I was going uh, when you were uh, coming in, Joe. Is the, uh, as soon as you, you keep mentioning S Silicon Valley Bank, you know there was these rules set up. There was uh, anything over two hundred fifty thousand, so they were so heavy in, in big deposits that this is the problem they're having. And then those big deposits are things that no other banks want to buy. This is a huge problem, and Silicon Valley Bank is not the only one. So I, I'm thinking there's possibly hundreds of banks with the same situation. We're, we're going to get the there. Fed's going to try to control this thing and try to keep uh, their time in this thing, Joe. It's so rigged. I love what Ed, uh, Edward Dowd is, is talking about because I'm, I'm completely, you know, I'm geared into right where he's at. Unfortunately, one of the things that guys always make mistakes, they actually, actually know what's going on. And, and um, Burry, Michael Burry made this mistake in 2008. He was way early. Because he didn't even understand how corrupt it was back at, well, when he was making these predictions. I don't know if this is all going to happen on Edward Dowd's timeline, but it's going to happen. It's just, you know, well, Joe, I, I, I was sending you some we, information. Right, we all, like, I, I think it. for us, right, we never, it's the win that we don't know, right? Win, we don't right. know. But, but getting right. back to, you know, as we were closing about commercial real estate, commercial real estate now seems to be the next epicenter they're talking about blowouts now in the credit spread uh, on these bonds tied to ready skyscrapers hotels shopping centers and other property types it's up and down the capital structure of this commercial real estate market it's everywhere speaking of everywhere elon musk yeah elon musk now out on twitter warning about commercial real estate saying that this is by far the most serious issue and then he he followed that up with mortgages too uh-oh i hope that's not right talking about many many borrowers are going to default on loans in the face of sh sharply higher interest rates. Listen, this is just math again, guys. This is math. They're not going to be refinance these buildings. It's simple. First, they're upside down on commercial. They're upside down. So first, already to refinance, they'd have to spend money. Second, the interest rate now is so high, Jason, they are going to walk away in droves. And, and guess what? And I said it before. Guess who holds a lot of this stuff? Over over 50% of this market is the small banks. The other 
4,000 banks. This is a huge problem. Now this, here's what's different, right? This is truly what? A credit problem because they're walking away. We already saw Blackstone walk away. We saw PIMCO walk away. Ah, nah, here you go. Have the building. Good luck. We're out. And now you're talking about 20% of the commercial real estate market comes due in the next year? This is a huge problem. Well, and, and, and the, the, the amount of money in circulation is down for the first time in a long time. It doesn't happen. It didn't even happen during 2008. And depositors have started pulling their money at the same time. So, so this is a huge contraction. So, Joe, the only thing that, you know, all of this should crash along Edward Dowd's timeline, except there's one thing. And I like, you know, we maybe we'll play it during the hour sometime or maybe at the beginning of the next hour uh, where Glenn Beck came out with the, uh, the FOIA request. Uh, where, hey, wait a minute, they printed $29 trillion and they didn't tell nobody. So if, if they can get the banks and the years. financial interests, they can, oh, hey, do they trust the Fed enough to get a more of this funny money? And, and, and this would be money that's off book, and then they can maybe float this thing another, what, six months, a year? Timing it, Joe. What are, what are they timing? It, it, the hard part is can they reinflate it, right? That's the hard part. See, before, rates were zero, so they could reinflate it. They're not zero now. So, so uh, again, can they – That the trick to what Jason's talking about is can they reinflate? I don't know. I, I, I don't think I, they I don't. can. Joe. You know what? I don't think they can, but they can at least make these banks that are going to fail now give them a little side cash, a little side amount of money just to, to make it happen later. Well, listen, when we come back, the very first thing we're going to talk about – Bank. How many and when? Welcome back here. This is the half empty cup. We're kind of merging Patriot Trading Group with it. Uh, we are going to have a good part of this half empty cup on the Patriot podcast, a uh, YouTube podcast as well. Uh, so, so look forward to that. Um, but this is big. This is a very uh, big deal here. Uh, when we're talking about what's happening uh, right now, the, the Fed, at least for a few days, is, is saying we've got some market calm, uh, but it's not going to last. We're going to be playing Edward Dowd. Uh, here's Edward Dowd talking about how many banks are going to be left when all of this is said and done. Jack, let's play that clip. Okay, so we're starting to see cracks in the system. We're certainly starting to see strain on the banking system. As you mentioned, we've had the collapse of Silvergate, Signature Bank, Silicon Valley Bank in the U.S., uh, Credit Suisse flailing in Europe. Admittedly, that's always been a problematic bank, but we're starting to see major cracks in the system. What do you anticipate happening there? Well, so let's... Let's analyze something that happened over the weekend. So Credit Suisse uh, was married uh, to UBS. Yeah, shotgun wedding. <laughs> yeah, a shotgun wedding. And apparently the, uh, the banking authorities and the government decided to throw out their existing laws on their books and rewrite the rules. You only do that if what you're seeing is so terrifying, you decide to you know, discard the rule of law and make up new rules. Because that is a tell. So I'm an analyst. When, when the authorities uh, violate their own laws, that tells me something, that, that what they're seeing is a big problem. So what I suspect, and I hope this unfolds, I hope they try to plug the dam and it, it's a slow, controlled implosion because speed kills. Kill, it, it, speed will get everything out of control and has unintended consequences. So I think they're going to continue to play what I call whack-a-mole. They plug their finger in the dike. Everybody, you know, breathes a sigh of relief for a couple of weeks or months, and then yeah. there's another problem, and right. then they whack, and then all the way down. Um, the, I'm hoping that's the case because, I, you know, to be honest, I don't want to see a fast panic. That's not good for any of us. And is this a similar scenario then that you're forecasting for the U.S. as another bank potentially is on the brink of collapse, and then, as you say, regulators manage to sort of plug that hole while another one sprouts on, yeah. the, on the other side. So elaborate, paint that picture for us. Yeah, so, what do you so see the, happening the, in the U.S.? 
the U.S. is going to be similar to what is going on in Europe. So the Europe, the European Central Bank has problems. The, the banks in Europe have problems. So we're going to see the exact same thing we saw um, with Credit Suisse and, and UBS. We're going to see shotgun marriages. Uh, unfortunately, the Wall Street Journal, again, I'm not trying to foment panics. The Wall Street Journal on Friday last week said 186 banks in the U.S., regional banks, are in trouble. So if that's true, which I think it is, um, it's going to become increasingly difficult for them to stand alone, and there'll be suitors and shotgun marriages is my, is my analysis, my prediction. And, you know, so the question I've been asked is, well, is this intentional? Well, I don't know, but it's going to end up in the same place. If you wanted to introduce a central bank digital currency, wouldn't it be better to only have six banks in the U.S., all systemically important, basically run by the government? So it may not be a plan, but that's going to be what, what happens in my analysis. And if it is a plan, well, it's quite an evil plan. But again, I'm not in the room, but I see this unfolding. There you go. There, there you go. So, so uh, very much what Joe has been talking about for years, actually, about uh, less and less banks uh, being in existence at all. And uh, I'll, I'll say this, uh, you know, I've, I've dealt with a credit union for a long, 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 long time. And uh, I, I would say very similar situations, you know, to get big credit and to do bigger business and to survive uh, in an in a atmosphere where we have less and less and less banks. Because at one time we had tens of thousands of banks all across America. And now we're less than 5,000. Well, I was in a credit union and, uh, you know, I didn't choose it. My parents chose it when I was a kid and you got the accounts all set up and, you know, you just kind of stick with what you know. But at some point, the, uh, the, the local uh, public service credit union got bought up by a bigger credit union, right? And then uh, bef before that and, and kind of during that process, a bunch of credit unions kind of formed together. Well, why did they all have to form together? Why didn't they just stand on their own? As Edward Dowd was talking, a lot of these institutions aren't going to be able to stand on their own. Well, you, you link together to have more capital, a better buying ability, better loaning uh, ability. And that has since just dried up and, 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 is, is, and now I'm going to my credit union because it's breaking apart. There, it's, it's not working as well. I'm not saying that the credit union is going under. It's just you know they, they, they joined together and had this sort to where there was more branches to compete against these banks. You know, for me... My branch is miles and miles away. I have to go way you know, far south or far north or far west to get to one of my branches to use it. And now I do that because every time I go to one of the branch locations, they give me a lot of hassle if I'm using cash or if I'm doing too much of that. They ask me if I give them a check that's over $1,000, which isn't a lot of money nowadays. They have to ask where did it come from. Does, 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 the, uh, does your boss or whoever gave you this check, do you, do you, do you like them? You know? Now, when I go to my branch where I have an, a membership, you know, I have a, an account, accounts there that I don't have to deal with that. But this is all showing stress that these banks are going to go under. So, Jack, we're going to play. Let's play the next clip. I think we have enough time. Yeah, we have plenty of time. Uh, the end of small businesses because this, you know, credit unions are small businesses. It's showing you, I'm, I'm telling you the stress of just a credit union. I don't think credit unions are going under because I don't think their, their asset sheet, I don't think what they've, what they've uh, invested in is very risky at all. Uh, Joe has mentioned that uh, in recent weeks. But uh, it, it does show that the, your, your smallness is a problem. So let's, let's go to the end, end of the small business clip. Uh, we'll play that one, and then we'll get Joe's comment. We, the, we said 186 banks are at risk of collapse. Well, so, I, don't, I, wouldn't think, I wouldn't say collapse, but the Wall Street Journal pointed out 186 banks that may have problems. That doesn't and mean you, they'll all collapse. But this, this is again, this is this number is from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. I don't want to be, I don't want to be accused of fomenting fear and loathing, but that is reported by the Wall Street Journal, which indicates to me it's a serious problem. So you're seeing essentially a consolidation of the banking sector, and I believe you've said that you anticipate six banks with, withstanding this crisis. Yeah, the, the, the six, six U.S. systemically important banks, and I think it's uh, Which Bank of America, it? Wells Fargo, Citibank, J.P. Morgan, uh, maybe Goldman Sachs. I don't know. I, I don't have the exact name. I know the, I, there's the, the, the four big ones, J.P. Morgan being the biggest. Um, that's what I th that, that, that seems likely. It, to be honest, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that does not happen. Will there be some regional banks left? Sure. I live in Hawaii. 
Bank of Hawaii uh, does not participate in the capital markets. They loan to state residents in the state of Hawaii. It's a very conservative, safe bank. People have been asking me if I move my money out of the bank. I have not because I'm not worried about the Bank of Hawaii. So there will be some regional banks left, but the bigger ones are going to, I think, disappear. They're in trouble. And why is this so problematic to economic freedom, to have this consolidation of the banking sector? Well, so um, local banking is obviously better because you have a, you know, a lot of bankers do, you know, give credit based on uh, personal relationships. And if you consolidate to six national banks, it becomes very formulaic. Uh, and those uh, who are the buddies of the people at the top get the loans and everybody else kind of starves. It's not intended that way, but that's how it works. And so local banking is, is the lifeblood of – used to be the lifeblood of the U.S. economy, and it's at risk of going away. And it's going to be harder to get capital if you're a small business. If you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have to go begging to those who have all the capital. It's a consolidation of capital. It's too much money in too few hands. That's monopolistic. At least in the old days, you could get a loan if you had a good business plan and uh, or an upstanding citizen, your local banker got to know you, they'd give you a loan. Uh, that's going to go the way of the dodo bird, and that'll have a uh, – uh, that, that, that's not good for freedom. That's not good for people wanting to take charge of their own lives. Um, working for giant – I've worked for giant corporations before, and I'd rather work for myself. You know, and I apologize. I had uh, some banking things, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, when you send out big wires, the bank wants to talk to the boss. Uh, but but uh, just hard things to hear, right? When you're talking about how many banks are going to be left, uh, you know, he's talking about the big six. I think the one he missed was probably U.S. Bank. Uh, I don't know that Goldman makes that list or not. Probably does. Uh, that that'd be my guess anyway. Uh, but uh, you know, and maybe it's eight. Regionally, you're going to have some small ones. You know, he talked about his bank. I think that may be wishful thinking on his part. Uh, but there may be a handful out there uh, that, that can, can make it. Again, we still have a credit problem coming. How many of those banks? You know, we've got 186 banks that have a bad math problem, right, which means I've got – Way too many unsecured depositors, that puts me at risk, right? So that, that's problem number one. Then you throw this commercial real estate problem, and all of a sudden, uh, does that, is that 1,000 banks? I don't know. Uh, but but then he goes times on 10. and talks I, I, I would estimate times 10. If it's 186 banks, you'd have 1,860 banks contagion. That would be at least, at least a 10 to 1. Yeah, and, and then he starts talking about, hey, listen, here's the problem with this. The big banks, they don't like to lend. They don't, especially the people that, and I don't want to say are poor, but the small entrepreneurs, they're not there for you. This is where I think this is going to be one of those things, and you heard them say it. Listen, this is going to be a blow to small business. Joe, you've made the... Uh... You've made the assertion before that, uh, hey, what we might end up with with this digital currency is all those small guys that the big banks don't want to deal with straight to the Fed, and then all the big depositors and big guys that are, are worthwhile, they go, they get to play with, with the big banks. That's kind of how the Wall Street works, too. You know, you have, I remember watching uh, uh, the big short when I learned about ISDAs, and you have to have $1.5 uh, billion to, to get an ISDA and trade on the, with, with the big boys, right? Same thing with the banks, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's not a great picture here. Uh, you know, the fact that we started out, you know, let's not forget where we started the show. He's talking about an emerging, emergency rate cuts within 90 days. And quite honestly, I don't think uh, people out there are paying attention, Jason. They are absolutely not paying attention. Again, this is a simple math problem. I hate to keep saying it. This mortgage-backed security problem, this commercial mortgage-backed security, it's math. Listen, these buildings are empty, right? The, 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 the people with COVID, they, stay, they work from home, and they're not coming back. They're, they're not going to be paying for this real estate, and it's going to be an issue. 
that I know you think, well, I'm in Phoenix. It's okay here. That doesn't help because once the contagion starts, it comes everywhere. And let's, let's not forget the contraction of the money supply. That's the, contract, the contraction of credit. And, and the more this goes, the farther this goes, the more you're going to see banks locking up and not lending. I mean, Jason, it, it, it's really a simple formula here. If he if he's right uh, about cutting uh, the rate hikes or cutting rates down, I mean, in, in just three months, then I think it's easy to predict that within a couple of years, uh, the price of everything that we buy will be doubled. I, I think everything. I think you see uh, seven, eight dollar a gallon gas and, and gold at four to five thousand within a couple of years. It'll take a little bit. Of time, I cut it out. I didn't put it in the in the clip. He goes normally. That's good for Wall Street. This time, it'll be a train wreck for Wall Street, these rate cuts. So, uh, 800-951-0592. Those $10 liberties, we still got them. 1180, pick them up. When we get back, we're going to go to digital currency next. We're back here, the half-empty cup, and we got a few more clips, and then we'll, we'll start taking callers after after that, uh, if you guys want to chime in, uh, have questions or comments, uh, but uh, just really quickly, uh, you know, you guys know this. If anyone's listened to me uh, for any length of time, uh, I'm a big uh, Jeff Gunlotch fan. Uh, he is out again today. Uh, he's been out all week, but just let me read this to you. The economic headwinds are building. Okay, now, listen, they call this guy the Bond King. Okay, so he's talking. When he talks, He's talking from a perspective of these debt markets, which is what, you know, when we're talking about Edward Dow, this is what he's talking about here. we got a problem here. We've been talking about this for a while, he said. I think the recession is here, and it's here in a few months. So his timeline and Dow's timeline are almost identical, right? The next you know, 60 to 90 days, he goes on to say, the Federal Reserve is going to be cutting rates this year, and they're going to be cutting them more than once. Uh, so, Jason, more of the pieces of this puzzle fitting together, but we know where this leads. We have said it forever. They're going to take this crisis, and the digital currency is going to be their little white knight. And I want to go to Dowd here. Here's Edward Dowd about the digital currency, and I hate to say it, is he in the Jason Walker camp that this is just a planned event? Let's play it, Jack. Uh-oh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, it's coming. I'm sure it is. Uh, a little Jack, here. Yeah, 18, a little, little 19, issue. 18, 19, 18, 19 to 2217, Jack. Yeah, that's the clip. So, and I overloaded Jack with uh, a bunch of these clips here. But, again, I wonder, and I'm thinking to my mind, because, you know, we only see certain stuff. What data are they seeing? What is, you know, Joe, I was going to actually say that before you're going to play the, the clip. This is what I was thinking, Joe. I'll bet the CPI gets into the fours by June, and then they, they say, well, we can cut it now. Because, look, the inflation is just it's circling the drain. It's going down, and, and economic chaos is happening. Uh, and that, yeah. here's the thing. That's just not the way it's actually going to work. Yeah, the, the, the CPI might come down for a while, and then they're going to cut rates. And then this is where I talked uh, last year about the bull whip, Joe. We could see this happen up and down and up and down in the next few years. Really bad chaos in the market, Joe. The only indicator Gunlatch says is not flashing high probability recession is jobs. And he said, guess what? The jobs data is on the clock, if you will, right? In other words, saying that uh, because of what's happened in the last three weeks, uh, the lending from banks has collapsed, and he, does, he expects jobs to collapse with it. So we'll have to wait and see uh, if that is what actually occurs uh, in all of this. Uh, but, again, it's scary well, when you start getting guys you respect and all of a sudden all of their timelines are, are lining up. Jack, you got that clip going? Yep, already. All right, let's go. The end game here then is going to be 
five or six major banks, which are then subject to more government control and oversight, effectively nationalizing to some degree the banking sector, which you say paves the way for the central bank digital currency to be implemented. So elaborate on that. So I've looked into the central bank digital currency and I've watched some of their members speak about it. The Bank of International Settlements, forget his name, made a speech about a year and a half ago where he basically said uh, it's a technical, it, it's basically, in his own words, it's, it's a way to control how the money is used, essentially. So what does that mean? Well, right now, a $100 bill in your pocket, no one can tell you what to do with it. But if it's in the central bank and you happen to be a dissident talking about an issue that you know, the, the state doesn't want you talking about, you can be targeted and have your uh, ability to transact stopped. Uh, you, there's also uh, a myriad of social controls that could roll out. Let's say the state uh, wanted uh, to start worrying about cow methane farts and wanted to restrict the amount of meat that you're allowed to eat. They yeah. can impose qu quotas and if, and if they get what they want, the technology, your credit, everything will be linked. You'll go to the cash register, ring up your meat, and the, the woman behind the cash register or man would say, I'm sorry, I can't transact this for you. It's total end-to-end -end control. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a very Orwellian scenario, but as you say, when the government is able to monitor your spending and program a currency to work or not work to enact certain transactions, or perhaps put a premium on if it's like, hey, you've flown 20 times this month for argument's sake, you've exceeded your carbon footprint without regard, it just doesn't work, and to, to, to buy another plane ticket, or it does, but with a, a premium attached to that. But what is the, the timeline that you're anticipating for these banks to collapse? Because you said a controlled implosion. So for these banks to collapse, for there to be a consolidation, and then for CBDCs to be rolled out, essentially roughly over what time period? If they're going to control it, they need 12 to 24 months. Uh, That's my it? Estimate. Yeah. 24 months before we're down to six banks? Uh, if, they, if it's controlled properly. That's the controlled yeah. version. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's fast, then chaos is unleashed. And I don't want to talk about that. But um, look, there's already uh, executive orders been written by uh, – uh, Biden about the CBDC. Yeah. There's already um, white papers from the Fed. Things are rolling faster than I would have thought. And, you know, look, if, if I was a central banker and I wanted to introduce a central bank digital currency, I would do it at the bottom of a crisis when everyone's begging for uh, relief and everyone's in fear and then offer the solution. That's what I would do. I'm not saying that's what they're going to do, but if I wanted to... Um, uh, get everybody on board, I would do it at the bottom when there's maximum amount of fear and people want to look to an authority to save them. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's so classically, is, that's is classically the implication, how these things are done. That's how these is things the, are done. Is, this, is the implication then that this is by design? I have no proof, but it's, it, 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 the, the, what I see going on is inevitably going to be that as it may. I have, I'm not in the room, but... Yeah. Uh, it's certain, you, you, you could speculate that it's by design, and you wouldn't be crazy for saying so. No, you would not be crazy for Jason's saying so. Jason's not crazy. <laughs> you know what? I like it. It slips by really quick. I've mentioned this before, Joe, because uh, you want to make everybody a little bit right and everybody a little bit wrong. So on our side, when you see these things, the digital currency and how they can shut your money off and do all these – nefarious things michelle says something really smart it's like well when you when you get past your quota and instead of shutting your money off there's a premium they're going to charge premium. you more tax 800-951-0592 patriot radio news hour in conjunction with the half empty cup want to remind everybody uh i don't know how we shouldn't but we still have ten dollar liberties available at eleven hundred and eighty dollars Two ten dollar liberties, fifty dollars less than a twenty. I love it. I mean, that's that's value there. Pick them up. Do not leave money in the bank. Now, I want to give uh, a couple of things. BlackRock has come out just in the last ten minutes, 
Investors are mistaken if they think the Fed is going to cut rates. So I would give you the other side, right? I've, I've been telling you, hey, here's who's agreed. Hey, uh, here's the other side. And, and remember, in, the, in, in Dowd's last comments, he talked about the Bank of International Settlements. The guy he's talking about, Augustus Karstens. And let me read to you what he was referencing. In cash, we don't know, for example, who was using $100? We don't know who is using a $1,000 peso. A key difference is a central bank digital currency is that the central bank will have absolute control on the rules and the regulations that determine the use of that expression of central bank liability. Let me read it to you again because it's important. A key difference is a central bank digital currency is that the central bank will have absolute control on the rules, on the regulations that determine how you are able to spend your money uh, Jason, I just wanted to point that out so people knew exactly what Edward Dowd was talking about. And, and, and I think sometimes, you know, many times, depending on what show you're listening to, what guy you're listening to, sometimes the the urgency is really harsh. And, and Joe and I, we have a lot of urgency. But I think the urgency really comes down to this, which is if you're – happy being a slave in the system then your life is probably not going to change a whole lot you just it's just going to be you're going to have a lower standard of living you're going to get used to it uh it's it's really important the urgency is for those that want to be able to be free to do as they wish and spend as they wish and uh, when michelle said look it's it's just gonna be one of those things where you pass your carbon footprint they'll just charge you more for the, that 21st flight because the first 20 or you get that per year but that 21st one i think that's really where it's going to go joe and, and listen to this I think for guys that are socially unacceptable, I think law enforcement is going to be taxed with the job of of shutting those guys off. I'm going to to tell you right now. Listen, these are not people that are 13. Oh, you're a 1360 wacko. These guys, I I mean, right? Boy, doesn't it sound like that? Oh, my God, this is what they would Joe and Jason say on the radio here. These are are mainstream people telling you what is coming. I, I can't be more clear about it, right? And she, she I think she had it right, which is, now uh, you're not going to get declined. No, no, no. Oh, hey, hey you passed your charge. beef quota for the month. Uh, there's a there's another $10 a pound charge uh, yes. for your carbon footprint, right? I mean, that's that's the type of stuff you're going to see. And, and Joe, the banks won't get blamed. If, if, if I'm correct, I don't think the bl- banks will get blamed for, for your money being shut off. What's going to happen is, and I talked about cyber warfare. There is a lot of bubbling up talk. They're all talking about cyber warfare. Well, how is cyber warfare going to make it tough on you? Well, if I'm right and law enforcement's the one taxed with shutting your money down until they, you can prove your innocence, then cyber warfare is the way that they can get you blamed. Oh, it was a Russian hack. It was China cyber warfare. You're a domestic terrorist. We don't think you really are one, but since our, our computer algorithm doesn't know for sure, just wait a little while till we get this thing figured out. Asset and Joe, law fortune, enforcement will asset be the bad guy. Asset forfeitures, asset forfeitures. We've seen this play out. It's probably coming with the digital money as well. Where do, I want to get this done so we can take callers in the next hour. We probably won't get all of this clip in uh, before the break, but let's start. This is uh, the executive order signed by Joe Biden. Jack, let's play this last clip. But let's talk about that executive order that you mentioned, and that is Executive Order 16047 that President Biden signed into law on March 22nd. And that does facilitate the development of a central bank digital currency or FedCoin. And there has been progress on that front. In fact, some people are saying that the Fed now payment system, which will be fully launched in July and uh, coincidentally launched in the middle of a banking crisis, is potentially setting the rails for this. But again, Edward, on the upside, there has been some pushback here from politicians against this. We've had House Majority Whip Congressman 
Emma's uh, pushed back with the CBDC Anti-Surveillance Act, and he wants to make sure that there's oversight over the Fed before any kind of digital currency is issued. He's maintaining that any digital dollar must uphold American values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness, that that needs to be upheld. We've had Florida Governor Ron DeSantis come out recently and say no, no CBDCs in Florida and create awareness of exactly what it is that a CBDC is. And we've also had Senator Ted Cruz come out just this week and speak up against CBDCs and the potential threat that they are to privacy, to economic freedom, and how they can be an Orwellian tool of surveillance and control. Senator Cruz introducing legislation to prohibit the Fed from establishing a retail CBDC. So with this pushback, is this in fact, inevitable. Wow, a whole three people. Some way that perhaps Keep playing it, Jack. A whole three people. Real big pushback. Protests back. can prevent this from being implemented. Look, I certainly hope this can be prevented. I'm very hopeful because there seems to be a uh, a very um, grand awakening of many people who used to think I was crazy. All of a sudden, I have uh, lots of credential experts wanting to talk to me. So. This is not crazy talk. This is and this is what they're trying to do. Um, whether or not they're going to use it for evil, I mean, uh, I'm of the opinion that when there's that much power, you will use it for evil. That's just the way it is. It's human nature. And uh, I have a lot of hope that it's not inevitable, but it takes a mass awakening of all sorts mm -hmm. of people. Shows like yours are doing that. Um, it's being discussed now at the po political level. Um, and, you know, we can do our own personal protests. I don't. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the rest of it. It's, it's, it's a big fat nothing burger, unfortunately, uh, that we got a whole three people saying something. Uh, put that gold away. 800-951-0592. We're going to open the phone lines for the next hour. Welcome back here. Uh, give the call in number. We'll start taking them. Uh, at the end of the, well, the top of the hour here when we come back, uh, 877-488-1360. That was Edward Dowd. Uh, you, listen, that, that was only bits and pieces. This whole thing was uh, about 48 minutes. Uh, if you go to allamericangold.com, you can listen to it. So you got to scroll down. I want to say it was on yesterday's website. Um, but in any event, just so you know what, what he finished with, was, hey, just by – everyone use cash as a symbolic gesture. Uh, you know, and he talks about, hey, I try to use cash all the time, even at the gas pump, and, and uh, you know, gave an example of, hey, I bought a water at the airport. They said they didn't take cash, and he said, fine, I'm not buying it. And the guy was like, well, here, uh, you pay – give me your cash, and I'll use my debit card for you type thing. And, again, more symbolic – uh, than anything else, uh, the the cat is is uh, the cows out of the barn. Uh, whatever other uh, analogies you want to use, but Jason, no, he talked about listen orderly. Twelve to twenty four months. That's orderly, and he says, and and, did, I, and I want to highlight this. He's hoping for orderly. I mean, I'm hoping for orderly. Jason's hoping for orderly. Disorderly. How bad does it get? And that's the real big problem here. And, again, for right now, the smart thing to do is have the least amount of money possible. we got to have money in the bank, but have the least amount possible and let this thing play out, right? Let's, you know, let it play out over the next 12 to 24 months, right, and then make a determination. You know, are we down to, you know, and I, I think it's going to be, you know, my number's always been maybe 100 banks. Right? He's talking about, hey, you know, we're going to have the big six, and maybe it's the big eight, you know, depending on who makes the cut hit there. And then, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, maybe each state's got one or two quote-unquote local banks. I mean, that's, that probably could be something we're looking at. Well, Joe, you could liquidate about 2,000 of those banks, and then uh, you should really it, – it's going to be what you're, what you're saying is just a handful. But just, it, just as an illusion, an illusion of choice – you know, you have the Colorado Bank sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase. You know, I, I think we'll we may see that in the future where it still has the name yeah, of your yeah. bank on there. This is our there's a little this thing is our local this is our local division, yes. right? 
yeah, to, to yeah. Get, try to give you that uh, opportunity. And, and again, I mean, it's just not a great picture here uh, that's shaping up. And, and I think, and unfortunately, you know what, people woke up for about a week and now they're trying to put them back asleep again, Jason. Yep. And I'm going to tell you right now, right? I, I, well, I think it's, they've done it. The question is, does it last a week, two weeks? It's not going to be very long. I mean, I, I looking at this and what's happening here, uh, you can guarantee that these businesses that have moved accounts, that the banks that are under pressure, Jason, they've tightened up here. And we could, we, you know, a lot of people now are talking about, hey, this economy is going to slow, and it's going to slow quickly. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Joe, and when I was talking about law enforcement may be – the uh, the one that can actually shut you out. I'm not talking about your local little law enforcement. I'm saying all law enforcement agencies of any kind. That could be the F, the FDA. That could be the uh, uh, the the, the uh, CIA, the FBI, the Department of uh, Defense. Any agency uh, law considered of some sort of, sort of uh, federal importance could lock you out. Up to your local police. And Joe, think about it. You go to a protest over what's going on within the, in the country. The, the law enforcement is the one that has to take care of these big crowds, right? Civil so, well, uh, asset forfeiture laws, right? I mean, I mean this, hey, guilty till proven innocent. We'll be back, and we'll have the phone lines open.